Hello everyone, David from Mind Solutions here, and today I'm going to talk about the travel router, new travel router. This one is my old travel router, it is Wi-Fi 6 Battle X, pretty famous model from GLI iNet. And then I have a new device which I recently received, Slate 7. It's Wi-Fi 7 and a lot of other things compared to the Wi-Fi 6. Let's see what we have here. By the way, this is not sponsored video. GLI Aina didn't send me this for free. I bought it using my own money. Okay, we have different kind of plugs here for different countries. And this is the actual power brick. And then we have Europe, uh, UK, and I don't know where this, this is from. Put it in the comment if you know. And then we have the actual Slate 7. We have also Ethernet cable, the USB cable. Now this is the old version, I'll leave it here. Now here's the US plug. This can be probably replaced somehow. Or oh, does it go directly here? No, it's okay. So this goes like here. Oh wow, so you do not remove that US plug. This US plug, this stays here and then it goes right this way and then you can plug this into an outlet so the same goes here okay nice and this is the actual slate 7 well opening is definitely not the same as on the apple devices okay here's the device feels pretty solid okay let's do a little bit comparison we have a better cpu here we have qualcomm quad core 1.1 gigahertz and here we have dual core MT7981B, though it is 1.3 GHz. Then the memory on the new one is DDR4 1 GB memory. Here we have 512 MB of RAM. And the flash on the new one, we have 512 MB flash NAND memory. And on the old one, we have 256 MB. Now the WAN speed is the same, 2.5 gigabit on the new Slate 7. However, the LAN port on the new one, we have 2.5 gigabit on the old one, Barrel X, we have only one gigabit per second. Wi-Fi speed is also slightly increased. For example, on the old one, we have 574 megabits per second on 2.4 gigahertz, while on the new one, we have 688 megabits per second. And on the five gigahertz, we have 2,400 megabits per second and on the new one we have 2800 megabits per second now the open vpn for some reason on the old one we have the throughput about 100, 150 megabits per second on the new one 100 megabits per second for some reason it's slower however wire guard speed is increased 300 500 for you now on the old one we have only five volt input and there is no power delivery compatibility of the USB-C. However, on the new one, you have PD, so you can put the 5 volt, 9 volt, or 12 volts. And the weight, this one is 196 gram, and this one is 295 gram. It's 100 gram more than the old one. Other than that, both are OpenWRT pre-installed, and they have the skin of the GLI iNet, on the top of the WRT, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7, VPN client server, VPN client server, DNS encryption, multilingual operations, and touchscreen. This one has touchscreen. Now let's connect it to the power delivery and see how much wattage it takes. I'm gonna be using Anker power brick for that. Here's the USB-C cable. Okay, it is booted. Now let's see how much wattage it is taking. It says 4.5 watt. And it says this power brick will be enough to power this device for 10 hours. For 10 hours. Okay, let's connect this to the computer and see what we have from the inside. Okay, here's connected to the computer using the LAN port. Let's see if it's getting the IP address from it. And it is definitely getting the IP address. It is 192.168.8 network. So I'm gonna go there and uh, try to open this. 192.168.8.1. .1. 
and it is asking to put the new password right away. Let's put the password, temporary password. So I do not use this password anywhere else. Don't even try. Let's put the next here. And it is asking how we can name the SSIDs. Now, keep in mind, all this can be changed later on from the inside the menu once you log in, but you can set it up from here. It's kind of like a wizard, settings wizard from the different platforms. So let's name it. This is going to be guest, not guest, travel SID 2.4 and the password 2025. Okay. I use the same password for Wi Fi, but this is because I'm in a lab. This is not the setup I'm going to be used when I travel. So put your own password. Do not put easy password. Do not put my password. Put something only you know. Okay. Travel SID 5 gigahertz password 2025 again. And again, use the different password. Do not use my passwords. Okay, let's see what we have. We have network guide that helps us to set up. So we have option to get the internet from ethernet to work as a repeater, meaning we are going to use this to connect to other SIDs and tethering. So you can actually plug your smartphone here or the USB modem or something that gives the internet through the USB and then click the button here and you'll get the internet from that device. For example, I can connect my iPhone here and have the internet from the iPhone. Okay. So I'm going to click exit here because I don't care about that. In the dashboard, if we go on the internet tab, we have the ability to put the internet configuration, meaning we can change the ethernet settings. For example, we can choose the DHCP static or PPPoE. We can put the static IPs, for example, here. I don't want to do that. And we can even do the VLAN ID, TTL, HL, what's the HL? Pop limit, okay. And MTO, cancel. Now, this device has the ability to use two ethernet ports as the WAN. If I go into settings here and I go into LAN, I can switch this to the WAN and use the LAN port as the secondary WAN interface. Awesome, right? Let's go back to the internet. We also have the ability to choose the SSID as our source of the internet, meaning I can click connect and then I can join to another SSID and then use the internet from that device to spread out the internet. No, I just touched this box and it's a little bit warmed up already. Compared to Barrel 6, it's already warmed up, even though nothing is going through this device yet. Okay, let's get back to the internet sources. We have tethering, which means I can connect smartphone to the USB port and use smartphone's internet on the Slate 7. And the cellular, it is pretty much the same. You utilize the USB, but instead of connecting smartphone, you're going to connect the USB modem. In the wireless, we have option to put the SID name and change the other settings of the Wi-Fi. We have the 5 GHz main and guest. We have 2.4 GHz main and guest. And we have Wi-Fi 7. On the clients, we have all the information about the connected devices to this travel router slate 7. Anything that is connected through the Ethernet or wireless, it is visible here. On the cloud services, we have the different cloud services from these guys. So this is good cloud is to manage the, all your travel routers at the same time from centralized place. And then we have Astro Warp, which is SD-WAN for this platform. In the VPN dashboard, we have ability to use this device as the VPN client or VPN source for both WireGuard and OpenVPN. We have ability to enable Tor and route all the traffic through the Tor. On the applications, we have ability to search and install the application plugins. Those plugins are probably for WRT because remember, this GLI INET is just on the top of the OpenWRT. We have dynamic DNS. We can access this device by using this domain name, which I'm gonna hide this from my video. You don't need to know that. We have network storage, which means I can connect the USB flash drive, USB disk or something like that on the USB device. Obviously, when you use the USB port for that, you cannot use smartphone or USB modem anymore. So, and you can share a specific folder only, and then you can add specific user only to access specific folders only. 
you have advertisement blocking, you have parental control, zero tier, which I love this functionality. Zero tier is something that I like a lot. So basically you can set up the zero tier network between your computer and this device and then access this device from anywhere in the world. As long as zero tier is enabled on both devices, on the GLI iNet and on your computer. And no matter how many NATs behind you are, they are still logically on the same network and they can see each other. So you can connect directly by typing the IP address in the browser. This guy also has the ability to use the tail scale. Let's go into networks. We have port forward to publish the service. Let's say you have the, I don't know, maybe, maybe you have the server connected to the LAN and you want the server to be accessible from the one. I'm pretty sure nobody wants to do that, but you know, probably because the ability of doing this was in OpenWRT. So the guys decided to put it in the, in the dashboard. I, I, honestly, I don't know why would you want to do that. multi one I understand why would you need that. You can have multiple WANs, multiple sources of the internet, and then you can control if it's going to be based on the orders of placements them here to fail over. If one goes down, switch to the other. If second goes down, switch to the third or by doing the load balls. You have the ability to change the subnet for the LAN, DHCP settings, and also, add the, and also add the reservation in the DHCP server. You have the ability to change the guest subnet. So the guest network can have a different subnet. You have the ability to do the isolation on Wi-Fi for the guest and for the normal Wi-Fi as well, uh, by the way. You have the ability to use some DNS security features. We have the port management, which again is the same as when we were on the internet and click the settings here. It pretty much opens this network management, network port management on the under the network. Again, you can choose which port is going to be WAN or LAN. Both are interchangeable. You can have two WAN or two LAN. You have network mode, which is router, access point extender, or WDAs. Now let's go into IPv6. I'm pretty sure anyone who's watching this video about trial router will never use IPv6 on this device. At the time you want to use IPv6, there's going to be a new device. Dropping gateway. You can put this device on the network and then do port forward or do share on this device and then access those services outside this device, meaning not on the computers that goes through this device, but even the computers that doesn't go through this device can access the services on this device. And then what else? We have IGMP snooping, which you will not use on this device. We have network accelerations. When the acceleration is enabled, it seems like the traffic goes not through the CPU, something like IPSAF from Cisco. So in that case, not every packet goes through the processing, which means we are losing the statistics of the speed, understandable. Otherwise, you cannot reduce the CPU load. And the NAT settings to enable the full clone NAT. And then SIP LG is something that helps the router. Well, not helps. It tracks the SIP traffic. And based on the SIP headers, not the IP headers, but based on the SIP headers, it will make a decision what ports to open or close when the traffic comes back from the uh, SIP server, for example. And let's go into systems. We have overview. We have different information. We can switch off the USB 3 and use USB two only if we have the compatibility issues we have upgrade we have scheduled task we can reboot based on the schedule or turn on off wi-fi including wi-fi 7 based on the schedule we have time zone toggle button that helps us to manage the vpn edgard tor or the other vpn client using the button we can enable and disable those services log pretty much any kind of logs you would have from the Oppo Open WR key are searchable here. On the security, we have built change the password, change the ports. How do we access this device and change the port of the Open WRT dashboard? You can change the port for SSH. You can allow ping from the WAN. You can allow HTTPS from the WAN and SSH from the WAN as well. Reset firmware. Well, this is their way of saying reset or factory reset. I don't know why would they need to say firmware here. It's just a reset like any other platform, but they wanted to say reset firmware and here it is. Advanced settings. 
you can modify advanced settings with we'll see so this is pretty much going into open wr team menu and do whatever you want inside that dashboard because remember this guy runs on the open wrt and then there's a gli skin on the top of it that gives you this nice view and the build to really easy set up whatever settings you want on this device if you have questions put them in the comments please engage in the comments or like it so that more people can see that and help out my channel